In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Christ. In the Gospel and the Epistle today, we are presented with two images related to the church and to testing, temptation, trial that we can and will undergo. The scriptures are always timely, but I think these texts are especially so in this new world that we are facing. First, we have the gospel and this fascinating story of Peter's attempted walk on the water. It is a story we only find in Matthew's gospel, too, for for whatever that's worth. It is a fascinating story for some obvious reasons uh, that Peter would attempt and even temporarily succeed walking on the water, but also for more subtle reasons. Uh, As readers, as hearers of this story, we're not sure uh, whether we are supposed to applaud Peter for his boldness and daring, or rather, to judge from the final result, if we are to conclude that his actions were wrong-headed from the beginning. Uh, of, Of course, it must be said that Peter, in the midst of great fear among the disciples, showed tremendous courage and love in his desire to be with Christ. May we even have a a tenth of that desire. Yet I remember uh, distinctly several years ago, uh, now Father Herman, uh, he made the case, uh, he preached uh, on on this passage, he made the case that Peter should never have gotten out of the boat to begin with. And the more I consider the passage, uh, I think he was on to something with that. Uh, obviously, the, the journey over the sea is a common metaphor for life, uh, certainly in the world of ancient, uh, the ancient Mediterranean, uh, with storms representing temptations and trials of various kinds. It is interesting on that score that the disciples are in this storm, uh, in this stormy trial, Precisely because Jesus put them there. The text says that Jesus forced, he compelled them to get into the boat. It was a matter of necessity. So as we sit here in the nave, uh, coming from the Latin word for boat, and the, it's navicula in the Vulgate of today's gospel. Uh, maybe Mindy can parse that for us, but I suspect it's a diminutive little boat. But uh, we might also recall. as we sit here in the nave, that boat is an image of the church. The apostles themselves are in the boat, right? Even even as they are the foundation of the church and co-builders of the church, they are part of the church. So, Christian, do we see what this means? That even as we applaud Peter's boldness and desire to be with Christ, what the account perhaps tells us as a whole is that we cannot truly be with Christ, know Christ, find Christ outside of the boat, the church, or, or apart from the struggle, uh, the struggle of faith, the struggle with temptations uh, from within and without that takes place while we are in the boat. We dare not try to escape either, either the church or trial because it is in both where we truly find Christ. This is also, I think, a point to be made here, that there is also, I think, a point to be made here about contentment and not exceeding our limits, of not leaving our proper domain or or station, if you will. We are called to be faithful in the ministries that we are called to, and to exercise faith that Christ in his loving providence and pastoral care of the church is working all things together. We are certainly called to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. But when we take on unnecessary burdens or put unnecessary burdens on others, uh, on one another, we consume the grace that God gives us in ways that rob others and ourselves of the benefit that God intends to work through us. I know for myself, I am increasingly uh, inclined to shy away from what might be called the big picture, uh, 
or what pretends to be the big picture, the, the big narrative, um, and focus more on the, the local, the here and the now. Uh, and uh, what we might call, I think, heroic normalcy. How's that? Heroic normalcy. We can certainly not be indifferent to what is happening in our, in our world, yet neither we, can we allow the destructive and absurd times that we are living through uh, divert us or distract us from what is true and good and from our calling as Christians. We cannot take ownership and spend our life's capital on things over which we have no control. Stay in the boat. Whatever trial God sends, sends us for our salvation, let us endure it with patience. Uh, though this will certainly cost us something, let us show that heroic nature of our faith simply by remaining faithful, by embodying normalcy in abnormal times. Secondly, turning to the epistle, the epistle reading for today takes us into a very different metaphor for the life of the church. We move from a boat sailing at sea to a temple under construction. And in fact, we encounter here our challenge for 2021 that you may have seen in, uh, in the publications here at St. Philip. Do, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and that temple you are. Of course, these metaphors, boat and temple, are or must be complementary. We learn that our time at sea in the boat that is the church is not just a time of survival or endurance. It is also a time of active construction. We are co-laboring with God and with the apostles themselves toward building God's temple, uh, the body of Christ, the eternal kingdom. The work of building may be monotonous and, and tedious. It may be carried out in turbulence kind of like trying to build a level structure during an earthquake or a hurricane. But building is not optional. We are building something. This is a work that we undertake individually as each Christian is a, a microcosm, a mini version of the temple of Christ's uh, body. Uh, Christ must be constructed, formed in each of us. And it is a work we undertake corporately as each member of Christ's body contributes to the whole, fulfilling his or her role as hand, knee, toe, etc. Again, joining these images of building and sea voyaging, we see that Paul shows us the end destination of our voyage. St. Paul says, Each man's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. In the gospel today, Christ appears to the disciples at the fourth watch of the night, that is between 3 and 6 a.m. Dawn is on the horizon. The Son of Righteousness is soon to appear in his fullness. On the one hand, this is a promise of help from our faithful and compassionate high priest who is ever present with us in times of trouble. He is not, in fact, absent, but is with, among, and in, in us, even now. But it is also a warning to us, a warning to build well. Because when we reach the other side of this life, our work will be tried by fire to demonstrate its worth. After all, uh, who else was on the boat in the Gospel story today? Judas. Whatever Peter's faults, just being on the boat is not enough also. May God grant us the strength and boldness to live lives of heroic normalcy, to build well in our homes, our parish, in our world, and to faithfully remain in the boat of the church, and so to be brought safe and sound into the harbor of God's will, our eternal rest in him. Amen.